In this section, we're going to cover the idea of Bernoulli random variables, or aka uh, binomial distributions. They're the same thing, uh, so you'll just hear, for, hear of them referred to both ways. Uh, so the, the three big ideas we're going to get from here is just first of all, can you define a Bernoulli random variable um, or a, bin a Bernoulli trial? Can you create the formula for a binomial distribution? Um, or Bernoulli trial, um, and can you um, learn to use do binomial distributions using your calculator? And the reason I'm going to show you the calculator is I've found a lot of students are going to uh, figure that one out on their own, but they're going to be dependent on it. So I'm going to very highly, highly suggest we're going to show you how to do this in the calculator, um, but don't do it at the expense of knowing how to do it by hand, by knowing how to do it creating the formula and doing it by hand um, will work all the time and the calculator only works in specific situations and if you don't kind of get the big idea and how you would do it by hand if you have a situation that the calculator can't do you get stuck okay so what is a binomial distribution well it's really simple it's any problem we have done so far where instead of looking at it as a specific um, the random variable where let heads be, you know, let, let, let the var random variable be the number of heads that are flipped on a coin. Instead, it's just we're going to look at it as can it be defined in two ways where you either have a pass, fail, or success, uh, successful outcome, or a failure outcome. And it's very important to make sure we understand that success and fail is not um, winning and losing or positive and negative. Uh, because, for example, you know, a negative could be very, very good. Like if I have a cancer test, I don't want it to come back positive. I want it to come back negative. So, so make sure you, when we say success, fail, it's just however you define the outcome. Did it happen or did it not happen? Don't get caught up on like positives and negatives. Okay. Then the other part of a binomial distribution is instead of it, it, it needs to be defined as um, repeated trials. Repeated trials. So if we were if we were doing something like um, pulling marbles out of a bag, well, instead of pulling all the marbles out at one time, we'll pull the marbles out one at a time, and then now it becomes repeated trials. Then the third requirement for our binomial distribution is on each repeated pro uh, trial, the probability cannot change. It must remain the same. That should be an O. Okay. So what that means is, for example, if on the first coin flip there was a 50% chance of getting a heads, that means every flip after that there still needs to be a 50% chance of getting heads. Each successive trial needs to be independent of the one that came prior. Okay, those are your three requirements for a binomial distribution. If you can do that, then you can not have to use our old te counting techniques and you can use this instead. So let's do our first problem and so I can demonstrate what I'm talking about. Um, what is the probability that you will roll exactly two sixes when rolling three dice? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define my random variable to be roll a six. And because I define it that way, now, success means I do roll a six, and therefore failure means that I don't roll a six. All right, easy enough. Now, and instead of rolling three die, what I'm going to do is rethink of this as rolling one die three times. And so instead of saying I have a red die, a blue die, a green die, and I'm going to roll all three of those, no, 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 I'll just write, roll the same die just three times and say first roll, second roll, third roll. And now that takes care of that. So now, what would this look like? Um, what is th so? Th this is basically the setup and, and saying, okay, did I define it as success failure? Yes. Or did we define it as repeating trials? Yes. Instead of rolling three die, I'm going to roll it one die three times. So I'm going to do it. Th I'm going to have a same event, same um, experiment three times. There we go. And does the probability change? If I roll the die and roll a four the first time, does that change the probability of my second roll or my third roll? No, it's the, it's, it's the same thing. Um, so this is a binomial distribution. Now, how am I going to define it? Well, I'll do it this way. Either x happens or 
x does not happen. And, and we know that means rolling a 6. So what is the probability of me rolling a 6? Well, on a, on a 6 sided die, that's 1 out of 6, which means the probability of me not rolling a 6 would be 5 out of 6. That's my first roll. Now, once that first roll has taken place, we will roll again, right? Because we have to do three rolls. And again, I can either roll a 6 or not roll a 6 and roll a 6 or not roll a 6. And these probabilities are the same because it doesn't matter what my first roll did. If I rolled a 6 or didn't roll a 6, it doesn't change the probabilities of the next the next roll, the second roll. And of course, we do this again for the third roll, where I can either have x or not x, x or not x. As we fill in the tree here, x and not x, x and not x. So now we have a uh, probability distribution tree. I have a tree that is going to um, represent um, every possible outcome for this situation. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in all the 1, 6, and 5, 6, where I have 1, 6 chance of rolling a 6 and a 5, 6 chance of not rolling a 6. Okay, so now the question is, is what is the probability that I'll roll two sixes? What's the probability that my random variable would equal two? And so let's, I'm going to go through this tree here and say, all right, well, what are my possible outcomes? Well, I could either, if I roll a six on my first roll and roll a six on my second roll, and I need to roll exactly two sixes, then that means on my third roll, I can't roll a six. Um, so therefore, what's the probability of that happening? Well, that'd be one sixth chance of get rolling six on the first roll, one sixth chance of rolling a six on the second roll, and a five sixth chance of rolling a six on the third roll. And that's going to result in a probability of what? Five over six times six times six. Um, pardon me, my my math brain is not working so well tonight. So let me go ahead and open up a calculator. Um, so six to the third. What does 6 to the 3rd come out to be? And if that will work, there we go. 6 to the 3rd. 216. Fantastic. Probably would have just been faster to do that by hand, but that's okay. Um, all right. Now, that's only one branch, right? That's not exact. That's, that's one way of doing it. What's another way of doing it? Well, again, I could roll a 6 on my first roll, not roll a 6 on my second roll, which therefore means I have to roll a 6 on my third roll. So therefore, another opportunity, another possibility would be uh, for the blue branch that I just highlighted would be, again, one six chance of rolling in on my first roll, five six chance of not rolling a six, but then I have to have a, I have a one six chance of rolling in on my third roll. And you'll notice that comes out to the same exact probability of uh, five out of 216. And let's see, are there any other paths? Well, not going up, because if I roll roll a six my first roll, then I either have to roll it on my second or my third. That's it. Now, what if I don't roll a six on my first roll? Okay, if I go down the bottom part. Well, then that means my next two rolls both have to be um, sixes. Otherwise, I wouldn't get two sixes. So it's not enough, right? So my third branch would be, uh, what, five sixths, one sixth, and one sixth. And so that's another five out of 216. So now, how are these related? Um, because these are all the possible ways for me to do, to, to do this. So you'll see there are three ways for me to get five out of 216. And so these are, none of these overlap, right? You, you can't do one and do the other simultaneously because they're all different branches of the tree. So this is kind of like leather or cloth from the, the problems from, uh, before, so these would be added, right? All these probabilities would be added. So it'd be five, five over 216 plus five over 216 plus five over 216. Or really, you know, really what that works out to be is three times five over 216. Right, um, and if we looked at that kind of before we put all those numbers together, what we could say is it's some version. It kind of just looks like five. Uh, sorry, three. Wait, we have three different paths. And um, there is, we need to get one sixth two times, and five sixths one time, and and that will result in the same probability for and where the order doesn't really matter. We're just saying it doesn't matter which line you pick; it's all the same thing. Two of your branches are one sixth, and one of your branches is five sixths. And so, how we could look at this, how 
how we can kind of look at this is saying, how many successes did I need? How many sixes did I need? Well, so aren't I just taking that probability of one sixth and raising it to the how many of them I wanted? And then how many failures did I want? How many, what, what was the probability of a failure? Well, that was five sixths. And how many of those did I want? Well, I just wanted one of those. So then what would be a quick way of coming up with a three? Well, what we, essentially did here is we said um, I'm having three experiments right I'm trying this I'm doing this trial three times so it's gonna be three and out of my three experiments how many successes did I want three choose two and that will dictate how many different branches there are that's gonna lead through my tree so we just created our probability um, uh, or uh, binomial distribution formula so let's write it out kinda now in like more formal, more formal definition, but here we go. So the probability of your variable equaling some number, okay, and that number, um, I'm going to call it x. So notice there's a capital X and a lowercase x. The capital X is the binomial distribution, uh, uh, is the, the, uh, random, the variable, the binomial variable, the Bernoulli trial variable, where the little x is the number of them that you want to occur. So then, how does this look? Well, all right. N is the number of trials, and out of our number of trials, we want how many successes? Well, we wanted three, or we want a lowercase x. Then we're going to take that value, multiply it by the probability. Whoops, excuse me. I don't want a parenthesis there. We're going to do it like that. We want to multiply that by the probability of success, raised to how many successes I want, then times the probability of failure, when, and then we're going to do the number of trials minus x. So if we're going to do uh, 50 trials and I want three successes, right? so my successes will be raised to three, well then how, that means how many failures do I want? Well then it would be 50 might take away the three, which would make 47. So that's where that little part of the formula comes from. And there we go. So what would this formula look like for up above for the problem we just did? Well, all right, so we said we wanted two successes. We wanted two sixes. So it's the probability of x equaling two. And we had three trials. And out of our three trials, we wanted two successes. The probability of success was one out of six. And we're gonna, we wanted two of those. We're going to raise it to a two. Then the probability of failure was five sixths. And we had a total of three trials take away two successes. And there you go. And you'll see that that, you can see that that gives us what we just came up with kind of using logic. Okay, so now that we've kind of created our equation, in the next problem we'll just do some examples and we'll pick it up from there. See you in the next video.